Hi everyone, this is New Beer Watcher. It is May 14, 2018, and I've got some surprises for you. More on the lens array and how to see them. Before we show you how to see it, let me show you what one of my subscribers had submitted to me. Look at the lens appearing right smack in the middle. Let me fast forward it. Every time his camera moves past a certain point, he starts to see the edge of the lens. And if he can hold it right on the edge, this. Where do you think that came from? Is that the lens of the camera? Is that the edge of the lens of the camera? Is that even possible, folks? Why, why wouldn't it always be there? What would the debunkers say about that? There's something wrong with your camera. It's always something wrong with someone's camera, right? How about when we move this thing where he catches it right on the edge and holds it there. Like my other subscriber did. See that lens here? Watch what happens next. You think that's from the camera? <laughs> no. The subscriber submitted this to me was suggesting that these were two ships. Look at that. That, that looks just like the other videos I've been submitting all along from Buffalo, New York, from Autumn. Yeah, it's a strange phenomenon. Right. And look at that lens. just keeps popping up. Where is that? Come on, this is not the first time anybody's seen that. But people are starting to realize if you can hold it there with an autofocus lens, you'll get the same distortion too. Want to see how you can see the matrix? Let's watch. Well, today we're going to highlight the Boogeyman's YouTube channel who's catch, who caught these objects in the sky with an easy trick. I just want to show you some of his work. He does great work. Look how, and in his videos, I'm just going to sh show you some of the highlights. But he shows shadows from the clouds and the sky. Like it's been reflected back from the chemtrails and the lens array. What are the lens array? Well, let's look. Now he uses a special light building to see these massive lenses in the sky. Lenses like these. Overlapping lenses, like I've been saying all along. Well, folks, by putting an infrared filter on your camera, this is what you get to see. The Matrix. It's time to wake up. The Matrix. is building up a matrix of lenses all around us. The same Matrix. That I discovered a breakdown of the matrix. Was it really breaking down? Only in the sense that the energy field from planet X as it passes over every 200 days or 100 days, it gets closer every time it passes around. We get this breakdown in the matrix. Huh. Well, let's talk about something else I found also amazing. How about MB3? Everybody's seen these clouds, those edges on them. How is that possible? You know, I am now on board with their ships in the sky that are doing this. Let's watch the hard evidence. So on a Plain Truth Info YouTube channel, this is... The hard work of Sean Grudeau, I hope I pronounced that right, did animation and careful study of this for a long time. He must be frustrated that finally people are waking up to reality of what's happening in our skies. Let's show you the artist rendition of his hard work and this animation of what's been happening. Of these I don't really know what it is, but it shows the ship going vertical or near vertical in the sky, which would be the cloud dispersing agents as they do it. So let's take a look at this video and leave the comments of what you think it is in the comment section. Thanks for listening. Plain Truth out. What is it? What is it? What is it?
is that? Can you that? Holy crap! So it's a, more of the hard work from Gary Grudeau. I hope I pronounced his name right. But these smaller ships will disembark lot off the larger ship and cloak the bigger ship. Look how they do it. That's their job. So let me just play the video. Guys that are being used to create all this different type of artificial chemtrail weather with their demonic uh, devices that are spraying back and forth that could be relatively small and they're making the cloud coking and the, uh, ionizing the atmosphere. But what propels them? You see them coming out of the middle? Well, Mr. Control is theorizing that it's coming from these <clears throat> propulsion devices that are based on Tesla technology using carbon fiber. Well, I'll have more about this Bose Einstein condensate, mercury based Bose Einstein condensate that circulates this near the speed of light, creating a sets up a huge electrostatic field which defies gravity. Go on. From another side, carbon fiber torus structure with gold wire windings placed integral to the structure. Each band of the windings is a separate electromagnetic that can be turned on and off by a computer. These multi-challenging windows allow a computer program to accelerate the mercury ferro fluid around the inside of the torus at tremendous speeds. And the rest of these guys, Raytheon and Bill Douglas, have these already in play. They already have these winged ships that look like just like the ones we are actually beginning to visually see up in the skies. Comes from one of the large ships. All right. Check out the guys' work of basically how this works. Sets up a charge on the mothership. Probably generated by the fan slash coil engine. The charge travels along its spine and electrified pathways onto the next craft behind it. This craft relays the charge to the next one and so forth until the charge is funneled to the smaller ships hanging lower to the ground. Boom. Pick a target. It was an act of God. Or men playing God. There's the guy that did it. All right, so th Let me pause this for a second. This guy deserves some credit. Go look this guy up on YouTube. Sean Gradeau. I French names are kind of hard for me. Look, he's been working on it since 2012. All right, so this is sent to me, and I forget who sent it to me, but the left-hand right. corner, there's another one to the right. And we're going to break it down here a little more to show what these are like. But here's the sequence. I just took screenshots and took a sequence, and here you can clearly see, you can see their ships up there emanating from the front, the back, and the sides. Look at that grow all around a central pointed area. This is all being concentrated, and it just continues to grow until you can clearly see the outline of the ship there on the right. It is clearly one of these ships that Mr. Sean Gautreau describes in his What is in Our Skies uh, videos of some 30 right or 40 here. videos of him watching, filming, and doing artist renderings. And, and he's right concluded here. that there's many Look different ships that triangles. were being up there, which we'll get into a little later. But here, take a look at the lightning here and take a closer look and you can see the black outlines of the triangles there. You can see them going right through as we slow it down a little bit. Here's a fast speed of just it going off at the very top. And you can see all the different lightning charges coming in from different points in different areas, all being centered on one point. And then when we break that down, we see there's two different energies that are creating lightning, maybe even three on this. And we're just going to watch this continually grow. See the ship? Boom, right there. Triangular ship, right in the middle of the lightning. You see it right there, folks? It's right there on the left. You can see it. It's right there pointing the lightning down. It is artificial. It is in our skies. There's another one right there. It's right up there in our skies. This was taken in Australia, I guess, last week or so. But here it is. You see it right there on the left? You see that triangle? It's exactly what Mr. Control has been describing. Case in point, proof positive. Bam, another one. Triangle. See it right here. Cloaked triangular ships. Happened the other day. Now we can see it another. There's a little farther in the video here where it creates a huge mass of lightning. So you see the structure on the left, the one in the middle, the one in the right. And one here. One, two, three. And there's another one above it. There's over four of these concentrating their energy towards one beam of one spot, and it's going to grow. And you can see again clearly, here's the ship, and it's growing. The lightning is growing. They're getting more power. They're getting more static electricity, and they're grounding it into the earth. And here you can clearly see the ships. It is like so self-evident. And there's another lightning storm going off this way. And this is proof positive, folks. This is from another shot that I, that I took from this uh, guy's uh, catastrophic catastrophes. But look at the focus beam here. Look at how it comes down into one spot, and it just gains energy and power once it grounds with the earth. Clearly, three. One, look at this. Clear. Clear. Look at that. In here. Distinct with the machine sitting in the upper left hand corner and a big right white ball that's. Only Look at this one here, too. Bang. Cloaked ships. Only going to gain in strength. It looks like the one on the left is feeding the mothership of exactly what Mr. Gautreau was talking about of one ship, the mothership, uh, enabling and powering the other ships to create multiple lightnings. This is exactly what we're seeing here in these videos. So, this is what I've got for you today. We're going to get into more a little later, but I just thought this was fascinating. To Cloaked motherships? <laughs> Let me show you something. I thought just a little predictive programming that we have here. How about uh, 
a little scene from Chicken Little. In the Chicken Little's all looking at the sky, and this bright light comes down, literally comes through, hits him on the head, bonk. He wakes up, and there's a hexagonal cloaked piece of a cloaking shield that fell from the sky. He plays with it. And then I'm going to go back to that. And But I want to get to this part. Then the sky just unlocks, unfolds, unveils itself. as the. And I believe this is symbolic of the lens array failing in which they're going to launch these ships and zap us just like we saw in the fake lightning strike. And they freak out and panic. There's your project, Blue Beam. Hmm. What is the opposite of the color blue? Red. Right? I'll show you in a second. Look at this. Here's a hexagonal scene. This thing comes down. It's got technology. It hits him on the head. Let me go back here. It's got technology on one side, right here. It's cloaked. What is ever on one side is displayed on the other. It's hexagonal. He plays with it, and when he shines, it look at the wood on the other side, inverted a little bit. It's cloaked. He touches it. It has a reaction as he touches it. And a little later in the video, it's the bottom side of his ship in the end, and the mothership puts it back on because it fell off from the skin of the ship. <laughs> oh, and if you want to call me Chicken Little, just remember, Chicken Little was actually right at the end of the movie. So if you want to call me Chicken Little, go right ahead. Next, I want to show you the explanation of Edgar Fouché. This is a circular accelerator, as you imagine. Go back. This is a circular accelerator, as you imagine, a circle within a triangle. It rotates a mercury-based plasma. At 60,000 revolutions per minute, pressurized at 250,000 atmospheres, and supercooled to 150 degrees Kelvin. Uh, did you catch that? Supercooled plasma. Well, it's actually the Bose Einstein condensate. So that is a process that these evil scientists have used. By superheating a sodium atom to separate these so-called atoms that are actually cubic wave fields and hitting them with six lasers in this chamber. So the gases are pumped into this chamber. One, two, three, at six angles with using infrared, a low wave frequency, hitting this laser, slowing and compressing the sodium atom down. As it hits and compresses and cools, then they evaporate, cool it a little more in this magnetic containment unit. As you could see, the mag, the hotter atoms or cubic wave fields are bouncing off. Only the cool ones remain, and they take this, and you've got the Bose-Einstein condensate. What does that look like on a 2D on a 2D I world? So in 1995, they were able to reproduce the Bose-Einstein condensate. This is what they call atoms in the wave, but I call them cubic wave fields. I do not believe or subscribe to the wave field. These are scalar wave energy, each one having its own vibration. And as they, because they're out of phase with one another, they bounce off one another, creating heat. But in the cool, laser-cooled environment, they all go to a same level at the same frequency they merge with one another becoming one singular wave and this is what they call the bose einstein condensate forming a singular wave acting as a single molecule a superfluid or a super atom and at this state of ultra super cooled near absolute zero temperature it, it becomes a super frictionless environment in which they can put this in a toroidal sphere, which is high pressured, which we saw in the craft, it accelerates it near the speed of light, and now we have anti-gravity machines.
Remember we talked about light and blocking the colors of light because of Project Blue Beam. The opposite side of blue is red or the blue sky, orangish red in the near infrared spectrum. <laughs> so here we have the infrared spectrum. The two colors of light that we do not see are the ultraviolet light and the near infrared spectrum. This is what we want to filter out, allowing us to see the blue side of the sky and the matrix. So please copy, like, and share this video. Have a blessed day.